the life of a gold miner, man. You can live at any river as long as there's gold, and you can make enough money every day to be able to go to the store and buy food. You know, if I can't make a dollar a day, then I make a lot more than that. But if I can't make at least a dollar a day, you know, then there's something wrong. That's with a gold pan. I mean, I should be able to get a dollar out of every pan if I'm just panning here in California for the most part. And the, the secret is a sampling. That's all it is. I mean, I've sampled up and down parts of river and in, in a 10-foot area, you know, find nuggets. And you move outside that 10-foot area and you don't find even a flake. So you go to a river, you take a pan. You don't always have to go to the inside of the bend and all that garbage where they say, you know, the gold's most likely to be. It's most likely to be deep on bedrock there, or when you can find exposed bedrock, but you'll find places that, like with me, just right here on this property where I live at, there's the little holes like I did in the... Uh, in my first dousing video I, when I was showing this creek and there was just little tiny holes that were made by the rocks in the clay bedrock which is a false bedrock over the top of the actual bedrock and there'll be holes all over the place and no gold in any of them and the very farthest one downstream where you'd think the gold would have got caught in the other ones before that by being swirled into the bottom it'll be in the very last hole of the series and I have no idea why it does that it just has something to do with the way the Gold is being taken over the bedrock and down to the holes. I mean, it's actually going around the tops of the other holes, I'm sure, to get into that one particular hole. It's the weirdest thing, you know. So the secret to gold mining is not just go out there and just do one pan in one spot, and when there's no gold, keep digging there. That's not how you do it. You go out there. If there's no gold in the first pan, you move. Even if it's only five or ten feet, you take a pan from somewhere else till you find gold. Then when you find gold, even if it's a little bit of gold, take a second or third pan and see how it looks. And if it doesn't look that good, you continue moving, but keep that spot in mind, because what you're going to do after 20 pans or whatever, is go back to the beginning. Basically. Not the beginning, but to the hole that you found the most gold in. So you're going to keep track of how much gold you got. And then you can, you know, let's take a couple hours, do 20 pans or whatever, you know. I mean, for me, it takes, I don't know, maybe a minute to do a pan, you know. And if I, when I'm panning it and I'm right there, I'll just take it down to the black sand, I take a look and see what's in there, and I throw it in the bucket. I don't take it all the way down you know, to where I'm trying to separate the gold out if there's a little bit of gold in there. I'm going to do that at the end of the day after I run it through the sluice box. First step is panning. Then when you find the spot that has the most gold of the area that you're working, or if you're not satisfied with that area, move on and f until you find an area that's good enough to bring your sluice box in. When you look at my how to build a suction tube video, we chose that spot because we're getting all kinds of gold on the bedrock right there. You know. Yeah, I really do like this new camera. Works pretty good, you know. Like I said, thanks for that. And you know, you can freeze eggnog and it'll last in your freezer till next year, you know, a, over a year. So I got right after the holidays, my sister brought me some eggnog as a present for a happy New Year's present. So I put about that much Kahlua in the bottom of this old A&W mug, which is, you know, three quarters of an inch, and topped it off with uh, eggnog, and that just makes the best eggnog, man. A little bit of Kahlua and eggnog. I'm telling you. Mm. Man alive. And you know what? This is actually just a test video. You know, for the knife, because hair is just one of the hardest things on blades. Nothing is still just as sharp. It's not like I've done anything to it. 
it's still razor sharp. Let's see. Yeah, it's still razor sharp. That just shows you how hard it is to cut hair. It's not easy. Definitely not easy. You know, especially when you got, if you have thin hair, I mean thin hair like some people, that's one thing, but uh, that's one thing I was not. I don't have thick, thin hair at all. It is always harder to do it this side. Always got to be careful with that knife, man. You know, cutting my ear off or cutting my fingers or something just isn't any fun. Yeah, I'm going to have to sharpen it more. Even though it's this that sharp, I got to get it razor sharp in order to cut the hair really, really good. So back to sharpening, even though it's still really sharp for most people. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I definitely don't want to put anything on it as far as it goes. Oh, look at that, it dulled just that fast. Or did it dull? No. Yeah, just that fast it'll dull it up. Just that fast. Because if you get too much hair and you're trying to cut too much hair at once, it dulls it really fast. It's like rubbing on a rock, especially my hair. It's just really, really hard. So, yeah, you know, I, I just just kind of pass that on real quick. I mean, a lot of you know that, but a lot of you don't quite get it. You'll sit there and pan in one spot all day, and you got miles of river you could be walking and looking for bedrock and looking for gold, and when you find those little chunks, that's when you stay and you go find some more little chunks, you know.